Welcome again. Today's story is distracted. They have been friends for years. They met in the very first year of secondary school. They became instant friends while other students were making friends and hustling around. They would talk about Jesus and the Bible. They would pray for us in tongues and in understanding. They just loved the Lord. They were the first two in their set to join the students' fellowship. They were both 11 years old at the time. They read the Bible voraciously. They also read other materials. Both of them were from very strong Christian backgrounds. His friends, his friends' parents were both deacons. His own parents were pastors. Christianity was not strange to either of them. What was strange was the love they both felt from the Lord. It was different from the love the other students around them knew. All around them they saw apathy. It was like waking up among zombies every day. They saw their classmates and roommates doing all sorts of things that wouldn't please the Lord. They tried to talk to them. Why would you be willingly engaging in actions that does not please the Lord? You are believers. You are Christians. How could Christians be living such a lifestyle? It wasn't about the law. It was about their identity. It's like seeing an eagle eating rotten meat. Something was definitely wrong somewhere. These students scored very high in Christian religious studies. How come the knowledge of the theory of the Lord is not impacting their reality? How can Christians be so dead set canal? At a point, they decided to fast and pray for their friends. They were all in the boarding house at the time. After praying for some days, his friend told him, God said, they should have a revival program. His spirit agreed. They were in junior secondary class 3 at the time. They announced the revival in all the classes. The turnout was massive. The power of the Holy Spirit moved mightily. Many were healed and delivered. They saw a definite reduction in the level of misdeeds in school. Some students renowned for truancy became fervent Christians. The revival evolved into a student's, a second student's fellowship in the school. Students called them pastor. Even though all they were doing was living up to the profession of their faith. When they graduated from secondary school, they were admitted into different universities. The fire went with them. They already had a reputation for being carriers of God's presence. They just had to keep being themselves. During the second semester of their first year, they went for the minister's retreat of a particular ministry. They shared the same room and talked all night. They were still talking when the vision came. The ceiling of the room simply cleared and he could see. It was like watching a movie being projected on the ceiling. They were both standing on the summit of a mountain. Two angels were standing right behind the two of them. He was looking upwards at the skies. The angel with him was explaining some things to him. His friend was looking downwards at the valley. The valley was full of people. Many of them were trying to get to the summit they were standing on. The angel beside his friend was looking upward into the skies. His friend took out a notebook and was writing down the things he was seeing. He didn't know why looking into the valley didn't excite him. There was much activity there. And he could help many. He could help many people come up to the summit if he paid attention to them. But he found his heart was stirred in another direction. He kept his eyes on the skies. The angel with him was saying some things to him, explaining why they had to come up that day to see the revealed king. Half of what the angel was saying was Greek to him. There was something happening right inside his body. Suddenly the sky spattered. A bright light came upon the valley. The bright light lifted after a few minutes. He saw a huge staircase appear in the valley. The crowd in the valley started finding their way to it, making it easier for them to get to the summit. 
Then the light shined upon him directly. He saw another set of stairs appear, linking the summit to the source of the light in the skies. The light lasted for a few minutes. The angel behind him told him to climb. He began to climb the stairs towards heaven. He had taken many steps before he became conscious that he had left his friend behind. He turned to the angel frantically. Why is my friend not coming up? The angel looked at him and said, He has kept himself busy with force. When he's ready, he will look at the source and his angel will guide him. He continued to climb as the vision cleared. Few minutes later, his friend spoke. Did you see that? He nodded. He was speechless and a little bit unhappy. He asked his friend what he saw. His friend described the same scene excitedly. His friend said, I saw a huge crowd, both the saved and unsaved. I saw why they were struggling to get to the summit. They have hidden sins. They lie. They cheat. They commit adultery. They backbite and live a sinful life. That was why they couldn't get to the summit. I remember writing all the sinful habits I saw. I remember promising myself to help these people by pointing out these faults to them. Yes, but it seems you were distracted. I saw you looking upward and not paying any attention to the people. Why was that? You seemed totally distracted. He told his friend to sit down and explained his own version of the vision. His friend looked at him and said, This God is mysterious. Perhaps. He's sending us boots to different sets of people. Or perhaps he's calling you home soon. Who can tell? They parted ways a few days later. When he got to school, he decided to throw away all the books and materials he had. He got his Bible and started studying it afresh by himself. He wanted to prove the vision through the scriptures. As he read the scriptures, he made news and helped by the Holy Spirit, he gained understanding. He shared the scriptures with his church members. He showed them what the Bible said. The emphasis on sin, sin, and the devil in the church is not of God. We cannot preach evil that good may prevail. We cannot scare people into giving their lives to Christ. Love is the spirit of Christ, not fear. Majority of those who became Christians because of fear of hell end up backsliding. Sin had been defeated once and for all by the death of Christ on the cross. A believer whose eyes is on sin has missed the point. The spirit of Jesus is the spirit of love. Those who came into Christ by the spirit of love find rest in him. The eyes of every believer must be on Jesus, the author and finisher of his or her faith. He didn't care what the religious people around him said. Sin consciousness has robbed believers of their identity in Christ. Instead of doers of the world, it had turned them to minders of the world. He started preaching Christ consciousness. He told all his fellowship members, You cannot be Christ conscious all the time and sin. Your spirit cannot conceive evil because your spirit is holy. Believers who go about hurting people, sleeping around and living irresponsible lives or chaff. They were planted in the church by the enemy. Many of them are pastors, prophets, and whatever title today. They are not of the kingdom of God. The Bible says, By their fruits you shall know them, not by their sermon. The reason many preach sin is because sin is all they can see. And you will only sin and sin and sin again if you are sin conscious. The first thing he saw was a change in the atmosphere around his fellowship. Joy, shouts of joy and testimonies rent the air. The dressing became liberal, but so did the spirit. Many he saw the fellowship as embracing carnality, some saw him as preaching the gospel of irresponsibility. All those views reflected the hearts of their thinkers. Good will always think good, evil will always think evil. If you give freedom to the Holy Spirit, He will always do holy deeds. If you give freedom, to the evil spirit, it will always do evil deeds. A born again Christian full of the Holy Spirit cannot abuse grace. He or she thrives in it. He obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit 
and became a blessing for many generations. Five years after the vision, his friend came to me, came to him, tell me the secret. My stars kept shining down. He reminded his friend of the vision. His friend got it. His friend took his eyes off fault and focused on Jesus. He saw the source and things turned around. P.S. A man once claimed he died and went to heaven. He told the story in the revival. It was a moving story. The pastor played the video in his church. Church members were moved. Many cried and rolled on the floor. Within a year, the church members had all backslided. We don't preach hell to get people to heaven. Jesus only is our message. You cannot be a child of God and continue in sin. The two are mutually exclusive. It is not because I want to make the rapture that I don't commit sin. I don't commit sin because he that is born of God cannot sin. 1 John 3 verse 9. Hallelujah. He that is born of God cannot sin. Don't live a sin conscious life. Live a Jesus conscious life. He is born. Live a love conscious life. And let the transformation come from within. Because you're here for him. To live for him. Not to live a life of sin. Not to live a life of sin consciousness. But to live a life of his grace and abundance. Of his love. Of his blessings. To live a life conscious of Jesus. Looking only to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you. And welcome to Grace.